Hi guys, I'm talking today about self-reflection. I'm giving you, in this video, five of the best self-reflection questions that you can ask yourself. Well, first off, why the hell would you do this in the first place? Good question. So I've written in a journal for years and I get a lot of value from it. Uh, understanding yourself is one of the most important things for mental well-being because if you don't understand yourself, then you are a mystery to yourself. If you don't understand your own emotions, your own thoughts, your own desires, what you really want, why you do certain things, the, the, more, the less you understand about yourself, the more you're gonna to come to fear yourself. Why? Because as animals, we fear the unknown. Because in the past, it had an evolutionary benefit to do so. We fear the unknown, we're more likely to stay alive and engage in self-preservation behaviors. But this doesn't really serve us nowadays. So the degree to which you don't understand yourself is the degree to which you're gonna fear yourself. So how do you sort this out? You get to know yourself. You get to know yourself through self-reflective, self-explorative and self-awareness based practices. One of which is self-reflective journaling. And this is, the, um, this is the practice I'm recommending in today's video. So it's one thing to just ask yourself these questions on a long walk or sat in meditation, which is another contemplative practice, which I recommend, but that's for another video. In this video, it's about writing in a journal and getting the information that's running around in your subconscious and getting it out onto paper um, so you can understand it. What you need for this practice is you need a pen, you need a journal, you need silence, and you need solitude. Because when you do this practice, you're not just answering questions like a job interview. When you ask these questions to yourself, you're asking your subconscious. You're asking the deeper layers of your mind for an answer. In the exact same way that religious people might pray and ask God or their deity for an answer, we're asking our subconscious for an answer, which I actually see as the exact same thing, actually. <laughs> when people think that they're praying to God, they're not really. They're praying to the subconscious and we've just given the name God to the subconscious. That's my, that's my take on that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna treat it like a prayer, okay? So what I want you to do is to find yourself a space, find yourself a time when you're not gonna be disturbed. I want you to find yourself some silence, some solitude. No one's gonna come in and bother you. I want you to ask yourself whichever of these five questions I'm gonna to reveal to you. And I want you to take your time. I don't want you to come up with the first answer, write down the first answer that your brain, that your mind comes up with. Because a lot of the times that's just gonna be a reflective, habit-based thing that's gonna be on the surface. So I want you to ask yourself the question a few times over the course of say 10 minutes. I'd suggest that you allocate a certain amount of time for each question, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes or whatever, or a different day for each question. This, this is a work of a lifetime, so don't expect to, to rush through it, you know what I mean? And one thing to remember is the questions that you ask yourself that cause the most emotional tension, they contain the most content within them, okay? So if you ask yourself a question and it's quite boring or you get quite restless or there's just some emotional tension around that question for you, regardless of what that emotional tension is and how it characterizes itself, that's the one that you wanna focus on the most, okay? Because remember this, in filth it will be found in Straquilinus in Venator. What you're looking for the most lies in the area where you're least willing to look, okay? So bear that in mind for this practice. So, on with the questions. Number one, what do I want? What do I want? Sit, ask yourself that question. What do I really want? It's an important question because you'll often find, especially if you're on the young side of things, you'll find that much of what you do in your life isn't what you want. It's what other people want for you. It's what you want to, it's the approval you seek from other people. You engage in activities and behaviors to get approval from other people, but it's not what you want. And in so doing, over a course of say 10, 20 odd years of doing this with your life, you can lose sight of what you really want. You can lose connection to what direction you're pulled in in your life. So stop, ask yourself the question. Ask 
your subconscious, what do I want, really? Ask your subconscious as if it's a different, as if it's another person within you, another entity. And ask as if you really want the answer. Number two, what am I avoiding? What you are looking for the most lies in the area where you're least willing to look. What we're avoiding is what we fear. What we fear is what's puppeting us. What we fear is what's hanging around in the background directing our actions. So when we look at what we're avoiding, that could even be just the, the bill was on the table. That could even be the dishes. That could be I'm avoiding responding to a person by text message because it's an awkward conversation or whatever else. Asking yourself what you're avoiding can give you a clearer picture as to what you fear, which leads to a deeper level of self-awareness. Number three, what am I the most grateful for in my life? Because the brain has a, an implicit negativity bias, we seem to see our world and our lives in terms of what we need, what we, what we don't have. Um, and to a degree, this can motivate us to make changes that are positive in nature, but to the larger extent, it just makes us miserable. It makes us see a world that is fundamentally lacking in everything, and it makes us see ourselves as fundamentally lacking in a bunch of other things too. So changing this, flipping the script, it's like you're building a new mental habit, and it's not going to happen overnight, okay? So by asking yourself, what am I the most grateful for? Just ask yourself the question, let the answer come to you. And don't and notice how the mind will come up with a bunch of canned responses to this that are socially conditioned, like, I'm grateful for running water, I'm grateful for my family, I'm grateful for etc., etc., etc. et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera. These may be true, but if you don't get, get the emotional response to that, then it's not your answer, you see. So ask yourself, what am I grateful for? <sighs> Breathe with it, feel it. Let the answer emerge. Let the answer emerge as if, as if someone else within you is answering the question. Number four, what am I afraid of? It's a pretty straightforward question. What are you afraid of? There's certain things that you may not be doing with your life. There's certain things that you may not, you may not, certain paths you may not be taking because of fear itself. And the thing is about a lot about fears is that Fears are like these things that are hanging around in the background that only seem to exist when you're looking in, a, in another direction. But when you turn around and look at the fear directly, oftentimes it just runs away. <laughs> because most fears, when you look to their root, you follow them to their nth degree, you follow them to the end, um, the extreme, what you find is they tend to unravel themselves. So by bringing conscious attention to your fears, they will lessen in degree. Or you can understand them better so you can confront them more effectively in your daily life. Either way, it's a good result. Number five, what are my biggest strengths and flaws? So if you are self-loathing, if you have a self-loathing image of yourself, uh, no, an image of yourself that's um, worthy of self-loathing in the sense that you don't like yourself very much. It means that you are focused primarily on your flaws and you don't have a, a conscious awareness of your strengths to balance these out, okay? So remember this, whenever you have a strength, there is a, a shadow flaw to it. There's a shadow weakness to that strength, okay? You can't have one without the other, all right? So if you are fundamental, if you think of yourself as fundamentally flawed in every conceivable way and there's nothing good about you, um, you're just not seeing the bigger picture. That's as simple as that. It's not that you are fundamentally flawed and have no strength, that's impossible, okay? That's <laughs> literally impossible. But you're not seeing your strengths. You're not seeing your inherent qualities that are of a positive or creative nature. So becoming aware of both in, in sort of a yin-yang-like fashion allows you to see the area, your, your limitations, which you'll always have, you'll always be imperfect, but it also allows you to have a greater conscious awareness of what you bring to the table and what you're truly capable of, okay? So those are the five questions. Let me quickly recap, okay? Number one, what do I want? Number two, what am I avoiding? Number three, what am I the most grateful for? Number four, what am I afraid of? And number five, 
what are my biggest strengths and flaws. So with that guys, I'm gonna leave it there. That is a video talking about self-reflection, talking about five self-reflective questions that are important to ask yourself and the benefits and the importance of self-reflection itself, namely healing, curing, suffering, bringing consciousness into your reality, becoming aware of yourself so that you may understand and know yourself and the degree to which you understand and know yourself is the degree to which you can love, accept and honour yourself. We fear what we don't understand, we fear what we don't know because we're evolved chimps, basically. <laughs> so, that, so know yourself and you will be able to love and accept yourself and make more effective choices and actions in your life. Guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you like that video, guys, please consider subscribing to this channel. Plenty of videos come in regarding mental well-being, mindfulness and self-development. Also, if you go into the bio, not bio, I'm thinking I'm on Instagram all of a sudden. If you go into the information on this video, you'll find a, the link to a free guided meditation, which I recorded. It's called Know Yourself Fully Guided Meditation. Um, it's about 13 minutes long and it's pretty, uh, it can be pretty intense. Um, so give that a go and let me know what you think, all right? You'll be subscribed to my mailing list and all that other stuff. I don't really use it yet, but I will be doing. Um, but yeah, I think that's it guys. Uh, and as always, check out my Instagram. Um, I don't really like, I, I, lo I load up my Instagram once a day because of the social media thing uh, and check messages and stuff. Uh, check out my Facebook as well. But if you want to connect with me, send me a message uh, or suggest videos for the future or anything like that, let me know, okay? Because I'm, I'm in this now. Take care of yourself and know yourself and enjoy yourself. <laughs> All right, take care guys, bye.